Hello everyone. Welcome to Nana Tool and Cooks. I'm your host Tammy Albers and we had a viewer question. Um, oh we have a timer going. We had a viewer question whether I had a favorite kitchen gadget or unit. One of my very favorite items is an Instant Pot. So with the Instant Pot and the KitchenAid, I have told the fire department that should they get everyone out of the house that breathes, get the Instant Pot and KitchenAid because I can still make money with the KitchenAid and I can feed the family quickly with the Instant Pot. I don't even care if you get clothes, as long as I have these things out. So we're going to make today in my handy dandy Instant Pot, um, beef barley soup. And it's my husband's favorite, and it was Brianna's request as well. This takes 25, so obviously we're going to pause for station identification once we get going. So with the beef barley soup, I'm going to tell you what I'm putting in with each step as opposed to reading off a recipe, because that's silly. Uh, I'm going to put the oil in, and I'm going to turn this around and hit the saute button. I'm going to have to keep spinning this around so I know what I'm doing. And da 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 saute. So when this gets hot, I've went. It 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 asks for a pound of stewing beef. I don't do that. Stewing beef is more expensive than a cheap steak. So I go and buy a cheap steak, get it partially frozen, and cuts up really easy. So we're gonna saute the steak with some onions. We had a whole onion and two good-sized cloves of garlic minced. And when everything's starting to sear really nicely, then we add everything, cook it. Okay. 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 Where's my dishcloth? Right here. <laughs> Famous word. Stuff. Where's Famous. my dishcloth? I'm always looking for my dishcloth. So I've poured some grapeseed oil in, and when this gets hot, the grapeseed oil will start to shimmer. And that's when we throw in the meat and the onions. So everything sears quickly and doesn't go yucky. It stick or not stick. And we have shimmer. So, we have a pound of steak. Or if you prefer stewing beef, toss that puppy in there. Oh, that was the onions and garlic. See, I forget what I'm doing all the time. One diced onion, two cloves of garlic, one pound of steak. So, the other things that go in here is some thyme. However, I dried some fresh stuff last summer. We throw in a bay leaf, some salt and pepper. Worcestershire sauce. I'm glad I can pronounce that. And a tablespoon of uh, tomato paste. If you buy tomato paste and don't know what to do with the rest, you freeze it in little Ziploc snack bags so you're not wasting so much. We have a half a cup of pearl barley. No, pot barley. I never use pearl barley. Pearl barley has the outer husk removed. So it has a pot barley has a much less glycemic index in the carb load. It has more fiber and more protein. It does take longer to cook. That's the only difference but it's much healthier for people who are diabetic or who are watching their simple carbs. Uh, what else? Oh, and uh, a cup of diced mushrooms or sliced. And I like using cremini. They have a nicer, meatier flavor. And three cups of beef broth, which is marvelous. And I did mention before that if you can make your own broth, you have more control over what's in it. We seldom eat beef for whatever reason. Uh, so I got I got the PC Blue menu, which is organic, and it has no salt added. So at least you're controlling the amount of sodium in your product. And we're just about ready for the next step. Oh yeah, we're looking good. So instead of, they say to add the herbs after, but you want the herbs to become somewhat aromatic. And it creates a, a nicer, richer flavor with the meat. What was that? 
That was fresh thyme out of my garden. Well, it was fresh. I dried it. It's French thyme, so it's nice and delicate, and it doesn't have such a strong flavor. I'm digging out a bay leaf out of my jar. About a half a teaspoon of salt. You can use whatever salt you want. I don't like iodized salt. Um, we don't need it. I prefer the pink Himalayan fresh ground, and I also prefer fresh ground pepper, but that's just me. Do whatever you've got in your house. And it's, again, to flavor uh, everything, but you don't, you can also add some at the end when in your bowl. And again, I'm not following the directions. I would like to sear the barley as well and get some of the meat juice in it and the seasoning. So I throw the half a cup of barley in, stir it around with everything. I did the same when I'm cooking rice in the Instant Pot. It, it makes a better end product. So three cups of beef broth. One. Oh, right side. Raw, uh, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. No name, which is actually a PC product. And one tablespoon of tomato paste, which I allowed to thaw from my freezer. And because of what it is, I will squeeze all the air out of it and put it back in the freezer. It's okay to refreeze these, these uh, smooth products. It won't hurt them, as opposed to meat and veggies and things. So that's that. And do I have everything? I got the beef, the onion, the garlic, the broth, the... Oh, forgot the mushrooms. See? Good thing I read that. One cup diced mushrooms. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I have fun doing it. Uh, mushrooms, salt, pepper, bay leaf, thyme, tomato paste, Worcestershire sauce. Oh, I got that right again. And the barbie. Getting out a little plate to put my stirrer on so I'm not getting it all over the place. Then we take the lid, which sometimes is problematic. There we go. And lock it in place. We put it in the seal position. I'm going to turn this around enough. So we want it on meat. Uh, saute cancel. We want it on meat to 25 in the more and it's ready to go. We now have to wait for it to build pressure. That can take anywhere from 10 minutes to a half an hour. It will beep and then it will be ready at some point. And they call it an instant pot but you do have to wait for it to build pressure. Sometimes you have to also wait for the steam to escape naturally but most of it is a quick escape, it's a quick release and you don't want to have it under your counter because it'll ruin the paint on your on your counter. So I have always been very afraid of pressure cookers, um, mostly because I accidentally got the lid of one in someone's ceiling and I'm really grateful my chin wasn't over the lid. But they're really, they can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing with them. So when the Instant Pot came out and I was reading about it and reading reviews, I thought, okay, I could pressure cook on this. I've also done potatoes and onions in the bottom and then made a meatloaf and wrapped it in foil and set it on top. There's a lot of different fun things you can do with these. And they make a cake in like two minutes, apple crumble in five. It's kind of ridiculous. That's wild. What's that? That's wild. You can make I, a cake in there. I know. Yeah, as long as the dish fits in, you can make anything. Anything. Cheesecake is amazing. Oh, yeah. Idea. Very fast, and you don't get the crackling on the top. So it's pretty good. So this just beeped, which means the 25 minutes are up. There's the slow release, which I mentioned, which uh, means you just let it do its thing in slow release. Fortunately, this is a quick release. So I take the tip of my wooden spoon. I stand back a bit so I don't end up in the emergency ward with you know, steam burns. And one, two, three, fire in the hole. Oh, there we are. 
Sometimes it takes extra tries. I am getting a cup and a ladle ready because we're going to be eating this stuff. La 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 Hey hey You're not videotaping that good time La 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 See the steam is slowly slowing down It is the little, the little, Did you hear the little click? That's the little bit red button Go, little bleh, 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 but Dropping And now I'm doing this Taking the lid off, letting it drip in so we don't burn toes on the way to the sink. Don't miss the sink. And here's the soup. If someone wants to get close up and take a peek. I'm going to come in. And Brianna, I'd like you to tell me how it smells. It smells delicious. Okay. It smells like happiness. It smells like comfort. Like beefy happiness. Beefy happiness. Okay. So thank you everyone. Oh, I'm going to ladle one up so we can see it up close and personal. Look at all the meat in there. How many does this serve, do you think? Is it that... can serve probably four people. If it's my husband, it serves me and him because he'll go back for at least two bowls. So I usually double it and then freeze a lot of containers and he takes them down south with him. So he has healthy lunches for work because I like to spoil him that way and I like him to stay healthy. And there we go. If we want to get close and take a picture or whatever. Uh, again, uh, I'd like to say if you'd like me, uh, if you're tired of just watching me on YouTube, I can actually come to your house and do some cooking classes with you guys all participating or I can come to your local community center. We can have all sorts of cooking classes. We have a, a scaled rate depending on what we're cooking. Um, and I can do anywhere from four to 10 people depending on your space or your community center space. And we can do a variety of wonderful, exciting things. So please make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks so much for joining us at Manitoulin Cooks. Bye for now.